Hello class, so today we're going to talk about chapter 6 and progress that's going to happen in Latin America. So in 1850, conservatism stood at a high tide. Then over the next quarter of a century, you will see how the liberals come back. Uh, they will bring all this export-driven expansion, you know, they will do a lot of progress technologically and they will integrate into the free flow of international trade. The Industrial Revolution in Europe and the United States um, during the 1850s and 1875 made trade very appealing uh, in both directions, like the manufactured goods to Latin America and coffee and sugar to Europe and the US. So, the Europe and the U.S. will send the manufactured goods, things that were already made to Latin America, and Latin America was exporting coffee and sugar. Factories were really rare in Latin America, but uh, steam technology will, uh, will create like a revolution. Um, the connection to the outside world will, will create uh, many ties to do more trade. Transportation um, revolution in Latin America happens when they begin um, changing things into steamships and railroads. Steamships replaced wooden sailing ships and um, steam powered trains will replace mules and ox carts. So you will see here in this picture, imagine they were transporting the goods through, you know, ox carts right here. And mules then this changes into a train which is much faster and they could carry much uh, more amount of goods to trade the wooden ships will be replaced by steamboats okay and telegraph lines were able to transmit uh, messages quickly and at the same time uh, they introduce electricity. By the 1874 there's a transatlantic telegraph cable that is laid on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and this connected Brazil to Europe and there are videos about it maybe I can find one and post it but it's interesting how they lay the cables all across the Atlantic Ocean uh, that could reach Europe to America or America to Europe. The industrial and transportation revolutions had massively really reordered the whole society and it really changed people's lives. And progress, they say, was with the capital P at this time. So here you can see a boat uh, laying out the Atlantic cable, you know, that will go all the way across to Europe and they'll be able to communicate faster. Uh, materialism really eroded traditional values, values because people who became rich at this time will be able to buy other goods. So you will see uh, how all these export, export earnings will buy like sewing machines, you know, steam engines and, um, you know, fence, fi fence wire and it could uh, import progress. Back in 1810, progress had a political emphasis. Uh, republics, constitutions, elections, but now it was a technological progress that will um, call out for liberal ruling. Families were climbing the social ladder, kind of like capitalism, huh? And liberal party will be the, the people who are climbing and the long established status of families who were already rich, you know, before like landowners and all that, they were the conservatives. So you have the liberals and the conservatives. The liberals really opposed the Catholic church because the church was really wealthy and the power they had was too big. And they would go against the established uh, church, you know, power. And, you know, there were abuses among the church members as well. And to conservatives, the church and the colonial days were peaceful when the mestizos knew their place and they were not climbing the social ladder. 
So you can see the differences between the liberals and the conservatives in views. So we're going to talk about the Mexico's uh, liberal reform. Uh, the church at the time, the Mexican ch church, owned most of the property in Mexico. And by this, I mean half of the best farmlands in Mexico, as well as monasteries, convents, and other urban real estate and church buildings. So they were really, really powerful. In Central and Southern Mexico, rural society was organized around an agricultural village. And each of these were around the church. And the priest was a local leader and sometimes a tyrant. The clergy enjoyed um, a broad legal exemption that was called a fuero. And the parish uh, priests charged the the religious service for the religious services, and the Mexicans were obligated to pay the the tithe. Remember the tithe, which is the tenth of their income to the church. So it was a requirement. It wasn't like something that you gave voluntarily. As church became anti-liberal, liberals became more anti-church. Uh, there was a guy named. Melchor Ocampo, and they believed that he was a leading, leading uh, Mexican liberal. He announced the non-existence of God, which was a big thing, knowing that the society where the church owned half of the lands in the country, some of the best lands. And Mexican liberals were more anti-clerical than anti-religious, they say. Ocampo used to tell a story, which is really sad, they say that the church refused to bury a boy because the parents did not have the money to pay for the, for the fees. So when the boy's father asked him what he should do, the priest replied, why don't you salt him and eat him? And he would tell that story to see how corrupt and uh, inhuman the church clergy were and they were holding all that power. Uh, the mid-century uprisings of liberals is the beginning of the period called the Reform. So this is a picture of Melchor Ocampo, who went against uh, Christianity in some way, and the clergies. Antonio Lopez de Santana, uh, he kept things from changing for a generation, and he was old, and he finally... Um, left for exile in 1855 in Mexico. The liberals who were against Santana, led by Juan Alvarez, who was a mestizo caudillo, uh, from the south became the president. Melchor Ocampo, who was a mestizo, and he was coming from a very humble background. Uh, you can see how he's well-educated, he's very smart, he's very talented, and this really offered him like a advancement in society. Uh, he was actually climbing the social ladder and um, progress really offered that, you know, advancement for him, even though he came from a poor background.